Hello everyone. So in last lecture, we have seen the various uh, bacterial diseases and uh, fungal diseases in case of fishes. Now in this lecture, we are going to discuss about the diseases which are caused by the worms. So basically, the worms or the flukes, they are the parasites of fishes, and uh, depending on their life cycle, they are divided into two kinds. The first kind that is called as monogenetic flukes and the second one that is called as diagenetic flukes. As the name indicates, monogenetic flukes. Mono means single, genetics means generation and flukes. These are the worms. So as they complete their life cycle in a single host, they are called as monogenetic flukes. What you have to remember in case of monogenetic flukes? These are the worms or these are the parasites which complete their life cycle in the body of a single host. They are called as monogenetic flukes and they are directly transferred from one to another fish. Means there is uh, no any other another intermediate host. Only a single host is there and that is the fish. Now the second kind that is the diagenetic flukes. See the name die genetic die means two obviously there will be two hosts the parasite completes its life cycle in the body of two hosts that's why it is called as die genetic flux uh, obviously the one host will be a fish because we are uh, seeing the diseases which are caused in case of fishes so obviously the first or the one of the host will be a fish and another maybe any other animal so <clears throat> they are primarily external and becomes internal only secondarily primarily this kind of uh, infections or these kind of parasites they are present on the external surface or external uh, body parts of the fish and later on the infection becomes uh, internal or secondarily it is uh, invaded by some bacteria or funguses but basically it is a external parasite basically these all these type of parasites are external so uh, in case of diagenetic flukes there is uh, one benefit or there is one uh, major which we can use to control the disease that is uh, we can remove the uh, another host, the second host, besides the fish, the another host will be there, uh, for example, bird, snail, or any uh, other animal. So if we uh, remove that uh, host from that water body, then easily we can control uh, the infection of that parasite. So the first worm which we are going to discuss now, that is gyrodactylus. We are going to discuss uh, two worms, uh, the first one that is gyrodactylus and the second one that is ductilogyrus. The names are quite similar, ductilogyrus and gyrodactylus. There is only a uh, single difference in between these two hosts and that difference is uh, this uh, gyrodactylus is a live bearer and the ductilogyrus that is a egg laying <coughs> parasite. So, in case of gyrodactylus, you have to keep in mind the first point. It is very common on the external surface or external body parts of the fish, including their gills and skin. It is found in freshwater fishes. It infects carps and trouts. What happens after the infection? The uh, parasite causes excessive secretion of uh, slime or the mucus. And due to the excessive secretion of the mucus or the slime, the fish body is covered by bluish colored slime. The fish skin becomes sliminess. There is a sliminess due to the excessive secretion of the mucus. This is the first symptom of the infection of this parasite gyrodactylus. Then the second symptom that is after the infection, the color of that fish body becomes fed. It becomes pale. Natural color of that uh, natural glow and uh, color of that fish 
that disappears and it becomes a uh, little bit frayed the skin becomes slimmer and the fins become frayed and ultimately torn ultimately in later uh, later stages the fins completely get torn so if we want to see the gyrodactylus in our uh, lab then we can observe it just by scraping the mucus <coughs> scraping the infected part of that fish body and we have to keep in uh, keep that part or that mucus on the slide under the microscope we can observe it in labs also then the infected fish uh, is often found rubbing its sub, uh, surface against the slide against the sides or bottoms of the, uh, of the aquarium why because uh, there is a sensation of itching due to itching what happens due to itching there is a uh, rubbing of that uh, rubbing is found in case of fishes and that uh, fish is uh, found rubbing its body against the solid substrata present in that water body that is uh, one of the symptom of infection of gyrodactylus so here you can see i will zoom the picture so these are the actual uh, pictures of gyrodactylus which are observed under the microscope आपण जर इन्फेक्टेड फिश घेतला आणि त्याच्या इन्फेक्टेड फिशचा तो इन्फेक्टेड पार्ट जर आपण थोडासा स्क्रॅप केला आणि मायक्रोस्कोप खाली ऑब्झर्व केला तर तो असा दिसतो ॲक्च्युअली ट्रान्सपरंट असतो तो काय काय स्ट्रक्चर्स असतात ते आपण आता बघूया सो इट हॅज टू कोनिकल प्रोजेक्शन्स ॲट द अँटेरियर एंड यू कॅन सी इट क्लिअरली हेअर बघा तुम्हाला दिसत आहेत क्लिअरली दोन कोनिकल प्रोजेक्शन्स आहेत अँटेरियर एंडला which bear the openings of glands kasha sathi astat te there is a presence of two glands and these glands secrete one sticky substance or sticky liquid and uh, function of that sticky liquid is to help that parasite to adhere adhere or to anchor or to stick to the skin or gill of that fish that is the function of that uh, glands now at the hind end <coughs> there is a disc like structure here you can see at the hind end there is a disc like structure and this is the anterior anterior end where the two glands are present at the hind end what happens there is a disc like organ and uh, which helps that parasite to firmly anchor into the body of that fish and that uh, structure disc like structure is called as hapter name of that disc like structure is hapter so the main difference in case of gyrodactylus and dactylogyrus uh, already i have told you gyrodactylus does not lay eggs it is a live bearer it gives birth to the living ones that is the main difference in case of uh, gyrodactylus and dactylogyrus so <coughs> this is about gyrodactylus so here uh, in this picture you can see the infected fish by the parasite gyrodactylus you can just simply uh, scrap that upper part of that uh, uh, skin of that fish and observe it under the microscope so you can see the structures so what we can do for the treatment of gyrodactylus we can use uh, acetic acid we can use acetic acid in the proportion of 1 is to 5000 we can give a treatment of uh, simply 1 to 2 minutes to that uh, infected fish of uh, acetic acid or we can place the fish in 1 is to 2000 solution of ammonia for 5 to 10 minutes to get rid of that uh, parasite now the second one that is uh, dactylogyrus as i have already told you gyrodactylus and dactylogyrus uh, almost same ahet doni pan but there is only a single difference in between these two parasites uh, in case of their uh, one is live bearer and the second one is egg laying so in this case also it is found only on the gills of the fishes or external uh, body parts of the fishes and uh, in this case also it secretes uh, bluish slime that is the symptom or identification feature of uh, dactylogyrus 
and when the infection is heavy the color of the fish fades or becomes pale again there is uh, also the presence of conical projections at the anterior end and uh, there is presence of the disc like structure that is called as hapter both these structures help in the attachment of the uh, parasite to the fish body now what we can do to treat the ductile ogyris uh, so we can use acetic acid in the proportion of 1 is to 500 for 1 to 2 minutes we can use uh, acetic acid or we can again use formalin formalin in the proportion of 1 is to 4000 that is also effective in the treatment of ductile ogyris now the next one uh, next worm that is the diplostomum diplostomum or uh, the disease which is called uh, which is caused by the infection of diplostomum that is called as diplostomiasis diplostomiasis and it is caused by a diagenetic trematode atta che je apan trematode sorry je worms bagitle hote te monogenetic hote atta cha jo ahe to diagenetic ahe what is mean by diagenetic it requires two host to complete its life cycle so this diplostomium is uh, primarily found in culture ponds so it is danger for the cultured fishes what are the symptoms in case of diplostomium it develops nodules or a cyst on the body of that fish the cysts are uh, about the size of 1.3 mm millimeter in diameter then what we can do to treat the fish first of all we can isolate the infected specimen because this is a very dangerous uh, disease and uh, if this disease happens in our cultured pond then that disease uh, spreads easily from one fish to another and there may be uh, huge mortality in our pond so we have to isolate that fish from the water body and we can give deep treatment for the drip treatment we can use picric acid for a period of one hour so here you can see the pictures of uh, diplostomium how the fish is infected you can see the body parts of the fishes and you can see the nodules or the cysts which are developed uh, on the body surface of that fish so this is the identification feature of the diplostomium so this is about uh, the fishes which are caused by uh, worms in the next lecture we will see the infection which is caused by pisciola or uh, leech thank you